Welcome to our last uh, seminar for 2017 tonight. Um, our topic is smart home technology. Uh, before I introduce our speaker though, uh, just a couple of quick uh, announcements. First of all, my name is Brian Deerwalker. I'm with Bloomington HRA. We're a housing and redevelopment authority housed here, officed here in Bloomington. Um, and what I wanna mention about the HRA is not only do we offer affordable housing programs and redevelopment, uh, activities, we also do these seminars and we do them every summer. So if you want to know more about the seminars, you can look at our website. We put it up there, bloomingtonmn.gov. Put in keyword seminar and you can see past ones that have been recorded. Tonight's will be recorded and future ones too. Upcoming seminars next year will be on that site also. Um, and uh, the other thing I'd mentioned about Bloomington HRA is uh, most importantly uh, what I deal with are home improvement loans. So if you have any uh, interest in a home improvement loan, it's called a deferred loan, and it's a great way to finance home improvements. It's uh, money that you do not have to pay back. You use it for home improvements, you don't have to pay it back until you sell, transfer title, or no longer live in the home. It's a 2% interest rate, and that 2% rate is only accrued, that interest, um, for the first 10 years. So it's a great way to finance. Uh, I just wanted to make sure you're aware of that, and you can look at, uh, again, going to bloomingtonmn.gov, put in uh, home improvement or housing loan, housing rehab loan, any one of those will get you to that site and you can learn more about that. Um, there's also a door prize drawing we'll do at the end. If you haven't filled out that card, we'll ask at the conclusion. Uh, make sure that you fill that out and then uh, we do draw two names for $25 gift card, two, uh, actually two $25 gift cards, one per household. So uh, if uh, a couple happen to both get drawn, well, you're only gonna get one of those. And uh, let's see, there's snacks in the back, help yourself. And with that, I'll uh, introduce John Pews. John is with Sightline Technology, owner, operator. Owner, operator. Owner, operator. He's got a lot of good information. I would like to describe what he's going to do, but I talked to him last week, and it, it was in five minutes, it was way up here, way above my head, so I'm not gonna try. I'll turn it over to you, John. Okay. Yes, I'm John Pews with Sightline Technology. I'm a Bloomington-based business. <coughs> My office is right over here by Devani's on Lindale, so right here in Bloomington. <coughs> Actually started in Richfield, but got an office here in Bloomington uh, several years back. I've been doing this since about 2000, or 2002. So I started in the audio business, the audio video business back when it was actually audio and video, and smart home tech really didn't exist. Um, we did do home automation back there, but the first thing I would have done was ask you for a $20,000 check and set up an appointment and come over to discuss it. Back then, this was extremely expensive. It could be done, but it was extremely expensive. Uh, and with all forms of technology, everything gets better and cheaper over time. And actually, the business name originally was all about sound and cinema, but as we moved through time, we had to I ended up changing the name of the company because everything became technology based. Everything now we deal with goes on the internet, has a computer in it, and you better know how to deal with computer networks because that's what happens. So to start this, and so we're doing smart home technology and the growing list of the internet of things, and there's getting to be a lot of it. So different devices out there. Uh, some of the most common thing you're gonna see in smart home tech is locks. You know, Schlage makes them, Quickset makes them. Uh, they are designed to go on your front door, back door. They can be Wi-Fi enabled, which means you don't need a smart hub or anything. It just simply goes out on your Wi-Fi signal. So I'm presuming most houses are gonna have an internet connection. Uh, got a business owner, that, that's all he has is a, is a lock. So if something goes, if he needs to, he can let somebody in the business when he's not there, and actually, he has used it to shut or to lock the place down when he forgot to do it when he walked back out. So uh, we're going to go over the different mediums of what what's out there, but I'm going to kind of go through the list first to go show you what's out there. Next most popular thing, lights. Everybody wants to control their lights, and the cool thing about the tech now is you can literally just change a light bulb. Don't have to change out a light switch, don't have to do anything else. You just need to be able to unscrew and screw a light bulb in or get a plug-in module. Uh, the plug-in module, we use that a lot with our security systems 
because our security systems have what they call a, uh, an astrological clock in there. So if you want to set like a Christmas tree to come on at sunset, you can set it in November and the, the system keeps track of when sunset is and slowly adjusts when that tree turns on over time. So it might start at 5 o'clock and then be at 4 o'clock by the time Christmas rolls around. So that's some kind of cool stuff about uh, the, the lights and their controllers. But like I said, you don't actually have to pull a light switch out. You just have to screw in a light bulb. And since the LED lights are rated for 20,000 hours, you know, the odds of you having to deal with it in 10 to 20 years are pretty slim. So they're, they're nice and durable. Thermostats, another very... They do have ones that can go outside. Uh, not necessarily like take water head on, but as long as the light's protected, yes. And so... Put one in the shower and expect to never change it. No, it comes on. Even I, I, put it the it doesn't. Well, you, put one, it you put one in a shower? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you could. Is, is that why it's not working? It could be the can. The, the, the can is metal, and the radio signal doesn't necessarily like to go through the can, and then the shower's got to have your cover on it to keep the moisture out. And I'm thinking that's what it's doing, is that... No, the LED is, but it's the electricity around it that isn't. So, yeah. So, and if you guys have questions, go ahead and ask them as I go along. Uh, thermostats, another popular one. Again, there is multiple ways to put them on the network. Uh, again, assuming that most people have Wi-Fi, you can get a standalone thermostat that you can control. <coughs> remotely that just sits on the Wi-Fi at your house. So no need to get controllers, no need to get anything else. I use Nest because that's a popular one and everybody recognizes it. And that's actually a learning thermostat too. And that will actually talk to about every smart hub that's out there right now. Um, and it's also standalone. So lots of different thermostats. Garage doors. Did you close the garage door? That was always a popular one back in the day when we were doing this is you roll in late at night, you were, might have been at the bar too long, you managed to get in the house, but did you shut the garage door? We could query sensors and shut garage doors. Now you can do it with a, oh, what is that? That's like a $40 add-on device from Chamberlain. It's the one I can think of offhand, but it's all it is. And it goes on your Wi-Fi again. So again, it's going to be standalone. And what I, what I mean by standalone is you don't need something else to go with it. It's just its own device. It works on the Wi-Fi. You don't need a smart hub. You don't need anything to talk to it. It can work on its own. So that's when I say standalone, that's what I mean. Okay? Okay? Go ahead. My garage door opener right now, every time it has a, it's not one where you have to go up and change the thing, it, you know, because you, know, you have the code on there, you go up and change it. Yep. It's the first version that where the remote, you have to have the remote to get in. Yeah. So what you're saying is I can buy something to go with that. So I'm down the street, I say, oh, I forgot to close the door, I can do yes. it down the street. They make add-on devices. In that case, you're probably going to have to get a smart hub, because I'm pretty sure the one I'm thinking of has to, it requires like the, at least the wink hub. But yes, you can get ones that add on to an old garage door. I know the security ones that we do, they actually like the older doors because it's a simple trip. That's all it does is it, it does a simple trip and it can, it can shut and let you know the status of the garage door if there's a sensor on it. So if I don't update my garage door system like that, I have to buy... It's an add-on piece. Yep. So I have like two pieces I have to buy. I'm pretty sure I'd have to check on that because I did see one the other day that, you know, a lot of these are designed around new equipment. But I saw a Z-Wave one, and as soon as it's Z-Wave, I know it re it's going to require a controller. So I saw a Z-Wave one that's meant to work with a wing hub. That, so you could, but you'd have to get two pieces, and you definitely have to have a smartphone then. That's the other thing I should mention when we're going through this. All this stuff is meant to work with smartphones. So any type of home automation from DIY to professional is all geared to work around your little device here 
that Steve Jobs gave us in 2007. Changed the world. So I guess I should clarify that, that all this stuff is designed to work around your smartphone. Or something you can put an app on. Or something you can put an app on, yes. So if you can, a tablet, anything like that, yep. Shades. Um, this was always a fun one. Uh, I put it up here because it, you can do it. It can get kind of pricey. Um, there is DIY versions of it. Uh, we would do a lot of this back in the day because of the type of houses we were working in. But it's just another thing that you can, tr can control. And depending on the house that you have, sometimes it really comes in handy. But it, it's just another thing that you can control. Ceiling fans, now we're seeing ceiling fans that are coming out with, uh, that'll work with control systems and also standalone. So they're out there. Uh, sprinkler systems, irrigation systems, again, usually, I haven't, well, yeah, I guess I have seen one that's just an app. So there is ones that you can just, it's an app on your smartphone, so it's gonna sit on the Wi-Fi but there's several of them that are meant to work with the, the different controllers. Water valves. This one I was talking to somebody earlier about. This, is, this was a kind of a cool little invention uh, that came out within the last year. Um, for people that have cabins or stay at the cabin and aren't at their home in the cities very often, I literally had a customer that we were talking to this about that was looking to put in a security system and he's a Delta pilot, spends most of the time up at the, at the lake. And so they're not at, in their house in Egan a lot and a, water, uh, a hose burst. So for two weeks, water poured into that house until somebody came home and found out what was going on. So this is a pretty cool device. You can get them uh, off the internet. I think Home Depot has them, they're 99 bucks. You still, have, and it comes with one sensor and the sensor will trip will trip that device and you don't have to have it hooked up to the internet, but that's the only way you're gonna find out about your water getting turned off. But uh, these can come in handy, especially nowadays where uh, laundry rooms are moving out of the basements and you're going to like first floors and second floors. The old, or if you're, I mean, if your laundry's still in the basement right next to the floor drain, if a, if a hose breaks, man, kind of big deal, it's just gonna drain down the floor drain. But like I said, as stuff has moved up, it gets to be a bigger deal now. So these come in handy, and especially for lake cabins also. So that's a very cool, uh, yes? Does that sense the flow and shut it off, or do you physically have to shut it off with an amp? No, this actually has, it come, I actually looked at it to make sure I knew what it was, and it actually comes with a sensor. So as far as I know, when I looked at it, the sensor talks to the unit and shuts it off, but it has to send a no notification out, and with anything, you have to have some way to communicate with your phone so that you know it's been triggered. But it'll just flat out shut it off. So it'll shut off the main water. Not shuts off the main water so it shuts everything off. So what Wi-Fi do you need to be on? Do you have to be on your own Wi-Fi that's based out of your home or can I be on like a guest net Wi-Fi somewhere else like in Minneapolis? Uh, well, anything in your home, we're gonna presume that you have it on the Wi-Fi in your home. But then when you're out and around, you can be on the cellular circuit, you can be on the Wi-Fi. As long as your smartphone is communicating with something, you'll get the alert. So it can also be on cell phone towers. And yep. also, I can also close my garage door if I'm in another city on some other Wi-Fi yeah. or cell phone yep. tower. Okay. Yeah, because like right now I'm on just on the LTE circuit. I could call into my system at home. I could dial into it, and I could drive my wife nuts in about two minutes by turning all the lights on and off. And yeah, she'd be real happy with me. But yeah, as long as you have, as long as your phone has access, you're good to go. So you're dialing into like a... Well, I guess I shouldn't say dialing in, but all I'm doing is I'm triggering an app on my phone. So I'm gonna use the one I have here. And so I just hit, I just hit my Total Connect app. So you're not calling anything? Like no. Oh, it's, just it's a phrase. In the old, back, I, I've done this for so long that in the old days it would have been dialing in. So a signal that'll be picked up by the router in your home and that will be signaled to the device from yeah. where you're at. So now I triggered the app and I'm talking to the, it, this phone is talking to my security panel at the house. Okay. And so I can go in, I could do all kinds of things. So 
yeah, it's, that's all it is. But like I said, back in the day, it would have been dialing in. And I guess I just showed my age. I've been doing this for a while. Do you think just sends gas leaks? Well, we have, there's carbon monoxide detectors. That's going to be the main one. But offhand, except on the security platform, no. But on the security platform, yes. So if, if you have a security system, we can put in gas sensing ones. But I haven't seen anything in the, in the DIY platform, but just give it time. Because like I said, more and more stuff keeps coming in all the time. How about just a furnace heater? If the furnace goes out of the cabin. They actually, because I remember you told me you just have a phone. It seems to me that I remember seeing one that would actually work on the old-fashioned dial-up, but you still need some way to receive it. No, it's the kids' cabin, and they have oh. everything. There's, yeah, they're uh, standalone. <laughs> yeah. There's thermostats now that will work. There's actually just sensors. There, you don't even need the thermostat. Yeah, there's because that happens since that furnace went out, then the pipe yep. all froze and busted, and everything in the cabin was yep. broken. They actually so the furnace, something on the furnace. Yep. Though they, you can get the thermostat, or there's actually just sensors that you can just get the sensor. It goes on your Wi-Fi. Okay. Yep, and that's great for cabins because you, yeah. you don't want furnaces going out. Yeah. Um, so Ed, when you talk about security systems like Floyd's or something like that, uh, what you're saying is that, that their, um, their system boxes or whatever will tie in instead of going through a router then? What it is is the, that if I'm talking like a, and then this security is a little different. So I'm talking about like, like a Floyd's or like the panels I put in. Um, we have more devices that'll talk to that panel. So what happens is, is those devices talk to my security panel, and then the security panel goes out over the internet. So that's the only difference is there's, that's the security panel's the hub, and then it talks to the router, and that goes out over the internet. So it just gives you, it gives you more, because we've been doing for security for so long, there's just more security devices that can talk to a security panel than they've come out with, we'll talk to a, a, like a Wink Hub or a, a Samson Smart Thing Hub. So that, that's the difference. And I'll go over that in a little bit too. And that's why this security stuff I'm showing here is an example of Z-Wave security. This is meant to talk to, and these are basic, um, these are like door sensors. The, the bigger one with the, with the image, that is a motion sensor, and then the other one on the end is a siren. And it's specifically meant to work with Z-Wave hubs. And, but it's just to show you that you can do security with the DIY smart hubs without having to have actual a security guy like me come in. It's just a different way to do it. What's the last one? The last one's a siren. So, yep, so the last one's a siren. And I I think they're made by Linear, but I'm not positive because I've seen them around and I've seen them in my, uh, some of my manufacturer stuff. But this is the popular one that I'm seeing like on the Wink site. And I'm going to refer to Wink a lot because you can go over to Home Depot and get it. So basically what you're saying is I can just like, go to Home Depot and pick this up tomorrow yep. night and put it in my house. Yep. And they actually, you can, it'll be monitored on your smartphone, which is called self-monitoring. Or they actually have a package for like 10 bucks a month. So it's just like I said, it's, it, everything's growing and it's, it, they're basing it on the DIY end of it. Video camera and video doorbells. This is where it gets a little more interesting. Um, these are all standalones. Uh, I've used the Ring ones and the picture they show is a good representation. And Ring is a standalone company. So, and I'm going to actually use the manufacturer's name because there's just not that many of them out there. Uh, the, video? the video goes to your smartphone and it record you can ring has a cloud service so then you can actually have it recorded up in the cloud and then rings got a bunch of other fun cameras that you can cover the whole house and the one nice thing about ring is it's battery powered so if you don't have power at your front door, which most people are going to, but I've run into customers that don't, it's got a battery that goes for, you know, three to six months in Minnesota because during the winter you don't get nearly as much life. But the big thing is you can have a video doorbell out front that's battery powered that's 199 bucks. It's the cheapest way to put video at your house, but you still have to have a smartphone. 
So that's the only caveat. The so next one. So your doorbell sits on your internet connection, right? Yep, that would sit on your internet connection. Company charges you for the data, right? No, I mean, you can put that in yourself, and then you have your internet already, and then that's all you need. It takes about, I can put one of those in in like 10 minutes. How much data does it transfer? Um, not much. And that's constant, right? It, no, 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 it's not constant. It actually just trips. It has a motion grid. You can set up for motion, or you can set up just for when somebody presses the doorbell. So like your Amazon guys will actually come up and hit the doorbell. I got lots of pictures of Amazon guys hitting the doorbell, which is actually kind of nice because then they hit the doorbell, I get a notification. I can look at the notification and say, oh, somebody dropped off an Amazon package. The UPS guys and the FedEx guys don't do that, but you can set up the motion detection so that if they get close enough to it, you'll get a notification anyways, and that's one of the biggest theft things we're seeing now is all the home deliveries. People are going up and stealing stuff off your front porch. So, so this one's the, uh, the Skybell, just another company that does it, but you have to have power at the front door. So you just need your, you know, everybody, usually everybody has a powered front doorbell and it just runs off the 24 volts that's running your regular doorbell in the house. So they're pretty cool. And the last one's a Nest camera. Um, it's just an example of an internet camera. There's lots of them out there. Um, I like Nest because they're a little more secure and I'll get that into that a little bit later. But it's just another example of, you know, that's a $199 camera. Uh, and it goes out, and it, literally, when we put this stuff in for, or when we did a customer about 15 years ago, there was nothing like this existed. So you could only do it to a laptop. The license for the Honeywell equipment was $1,000, just for the license to put the software on his laptop. This is a $199 camera and a free app, and it goes over your smartphone. That's how much things have changed over the years. And then I mentioned carbon and smoke alarms. Um, that one's Kitty, that one's Nest. Nest is kind of famous for the carbon smoke alarm. It works with the Nest system, but it will also work with a lot of the smart hubs. Same with the Kitty. It actually works with the smart hub, so you can get a notification on your phone. Um, it's kind of taking it the next step which is nice. Are there, are, you know, are there just as good as ones that battery operated or ones that are hardwired? Yes. Yep. The big one of the hardwire ones is you have to have them per code. And, but they, don't, they, they alert the people in the house, but they don't tell anything else. They don't tell anybody else what's going on. And that's kind of the idea about getting these alerts is that you know, you could literally know that there's a fire in your house before anybody else does because your phone's going to alert you about it. That's kind of the idea about it. The more, more information you have, the better off you are. Can you control this with just one app or are you going to have like 20 different? The, the Nest one, you, it's just the Nest app. Uh, that's why I use it. It's pretty popular. Nest, Nest makes the thermostat, the, vid the video, and then this one. Um, and it's pretty popular. And so they'll all talk to the Nest app. That's all you've got to do is have the Nest app on your phone. The Kitty one I saw when I was doing some reach for, research for this, and I, I'm pretty sh I would think because Kitty put it out, there's, there's an app that would go on your phone for it if you just want to talk to that, but it would also talk to the smart hubs, which we'll get to in just a little bit. I'm just going to hit them because they're out there. Yes, your refrigerators can talk to your DIY smart hubs or an app on your phone. So it's, and this one, ovens and stoves. I work with a guy from Warner Stellion. And I gave this quick presentation at my network meeting, and he said, you forgot the stoves. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, stoves. Stoves are smart now. So yep, you can get apps. They go on your phone. It's pretty cool, and they'll talk to the smart hubs. This is one for gas-based ones. Gas or electric. Because th these are more, they're going to be electronic ignition. And actually, that app. This one, so the one in the corner, that's actually a knob that goes in between, so you can actually put that on an old stove. I haven't quite figured out why this smart thing might uh... Yeah, I know. It's just everything's... I used to tell my customers when I would wire homes, I would run network lines to the kitchen and up by the laundry because it's, I'd always told them it's coming. And, and I just never figured out, though, that they were going to put them on Wi-Fi. So everything's really on Wi-Fi. There's really not too many that have hard connections. 
but what's the extent of Wi-Fi in your home? Does it pretty much encompass this entire house, or is there? That's yeah, usually. I mean, we'll have to. Sometimes when we do some of these installs, we'll have to boost the Wi-Fi in the home because the stuff you get from CenturyLink, Comcast, MediaCom, whoever. Sometimes that's not enough, so we'll have to come in and do a little tweaking to the Wi-Fi in the home. But there's a couple really good systems now where we can put on a couple uh, units in the home and get Wi-Fi everywhere. And some of these old homes are a challenge. I've got one in Edina where we've got five wireless access points in the house because it's all brick, stucco. I mean, it's old school construction. And you can't get a Wi-Fi signal to propagate in that house at all. So we have five units in that house for her to get decent Wi-Fi coverage in her house. I, we literally have a church where we have five for the entire church that covers 10,000 square feet. So quite a difference. But it's just how the Wi-Fi signal propagates through their house. But they've got a couple systems now where we can, we can boost up the signal pretty easily. Appliances, yes, your washer and dryer, your, your uh, water heater, more for your tankless units, but they have it out there. Reem's got one that talks to all their stuff. And that's it for, for the gear that I put up there. So that kind of just trying to give you an idea of all the stuff that's out there. Now we're going to get into how do they talk, because that's a big deal. That is a very big deal. Um, we have Z-Wave. We have Zigbee. We have the Kitty style. We have Bluetooth. And I put Bluetooth up there because there's a couple of them that do Bluetooth. And the thing about Bluetooth is it works for about 30 feet. A Bluetooth signal will work for about 30 feet, but there is at least one or two companies that have a couple cool products that work on Bluetooth. And depending on where you put your smart hub, you can get it to talk to that Bluetooth device. So if you have like an average house here in Bloomington, Richfield, wherever, if that smart hub is in kind of in the middle of the house, you can get it to talk to those Bluetooth devices. But I put it up there because it's, it's one of the communication standards. Uh, Clear Connect by Lutron, I actually put that up there because that's an example of a bigger system um, that's designed for bigger homes. And then Wi-Fi is just, it's one of the major standards. So, and this is where it gets important, the big three. So, the big three communication standards are Z-Wave, Wi-Fi, and Zigbee. Those are the three big ones. And the reason you got to know is because when you go to Home Depot or you buy something off of Amazon, you're going to buy a little device. And you have to know how that device communicates because if you're going to add it to a smart hub, you got to know what that smart hub will talk to. And so that's why I listed these are the big ones, and this by far is the biggest. So Z-Wave, the Z-Wave consortium has the most amount of devices out there, hands down. So if you go to Home Depot or wherever, you want, you're basically looking for Z-Wave enabled devices. That's the big one. Next one is probably Wi-Fi and Zigbee are probably about the same. Uh, Zigbee is more familiar to, to the professionals because we started with Zigbee and Wi-Fi and then Z-Wave showed up. And Z-Wave was really kind of geared towards the consumer market, but they have just flat out taken over control of the amount of smart devices out there. So anytime you're looking, the communication standard's a big one, especially if you want to start working on multiple devices in the home. Voice interaction. We know this one is. Alexa. And the one over there. Google Home. So very good, though. Yes, so voice interaction has become a big deal in like the last two years. It's been kind of... It, you know, we had Siri show up maybe four years ago, but Siri was kind of a cute little thing that was on your smartphone. But now with Google Home and Alexa, it's just gone nuts. I mean, what we can get Alexa to do is kind of crazy now. So we're getting very close to the, if anybody's a Star Trek fan, we're getting close to those days where you can do an awful lot just by talking to your Alexa. And you can actually change the name of that thing, too, because I've got people that have different names for their Is Alexa. this all of that sort of fashion statement, or is there more to it? No, it's, this is the Echo Dot. And then this is the one with the bigger speaker. It's just, I forget what they call Echo. it, just the Echo. Yeah. You yeah. came up with a new one that has a screen now. Oh, <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that one yet. But that's how fast things change. 
but these are the two big ones for voice interaction. If, if anything, and, and it's nice because it, instead of having to use the screen, you just talk to Alexa and, or Google Home and you can have them sync to the calendars in your smartphone or your Google Calendar or you name it. The amount of stuff that this stuff is, is doing these days is amazing. And most of the companies will announce that they're Alexa compatible or Google Home compatible. They'll tell you. In fact, a couple of companies, it's a big deal. We're waiting for Yamaha to announce that they're actually compatible with Alexa. So, so if I have a thermostat, now I have two ways of controlling it. I can either talk to Alexa or do it on my phone. Correct. Or you can just go up and touch it. Or I can touch it. So you have three ways. Okay. Yeah. So it's just, a, it, a, the way I describe it is, a, you know, for the Echo Dot's like 49 bucks. That's all it is. But it all has to be on the same wave? It has to be on the same, it has to be on the same local area network and that's where we're getting a little more complicated but let me get to the smart we'll get the next one I think is the hub the hubs yeah so what I've been calling the smart hubs here they are and this is just again an example of three of them they're kind of the big ones there's more of them out there and what a smart hub is is it's talking to your z-wave device it's talking to your zigbee device that's what's actually talking to it the only thing that you're going to have on your phone that's going to have an app that's going to be standalone is usually Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, one of the two. It's not going to be Zigbee or Z-Wave. You have to have a hub in between for that. So that's what we just looked at, that Google thing and then the... No, nope, these are the hubs. Well, those are the hubs. These are the hubs. And so when I say talking to, I guess maybe I should say communicate. So when you press the light switch on, like you, you, you bring up the, your smart device, and you want to turn a light off. So you press that button, it's actually talking to that, and then that's telling the light switch to turn off. Okay. Yep, and so Alexa is just another way of doing it. She's, in essence, you're just telling Alexa to push the button for you. That, that's all it is. But this is an example of the Wink Hub. Again, you can get them from Home Depot. Vera's been around a long time. You can get them on the internet. And Samsung Smart Home, I think Best Buy has it. I'm not sure, but you can get it on the, Okay. Um, Is Hub limited to a certain number of devices? They're limited to about... What? A certain number of ports? No, not ports. Um, these will all tunnel back to their servers. Um, so you don't have to mess with your router at all. These all tunnel back to wherever their servers are located. And a lot of the controlling smarts are out in the cloud. So there's also something located out in the cloud that's talking to these and talking to your phone at the same time to get it to do stuff. And that's why these are less expensive. They don't have as much processing power because they're using stuff out in the cloud to do the processing for them. That's actually Alexa, Google Home. They don't have, do much local processing. It all goes back to Google or Amazon servers and then comes back to your phone, just like Siri does too. Siri actually is processed by Apple in the cloud so everything you're talking to Siri about, they're actually, it's going out to the cloud and coming back to your phone that quickly. Uh, and like I said, these things, you can do just crazy amounts of stuff with them. Uh, the amount of devices, if you go to their websites, is just amazing, the amount of stuff that you can link to these. And it's all done, designed to be done by you guys. It's all designed to be DIY. And most of them, I got the guy at my office uses the Wink Hub. And he likes it. He has fun. But the one thing he does is he's got an Alexa sitting on his desk. Alexa, Google Home learns your voice. Alexa doesn't. So we can, we can tell Alexa to do things to his lights at his house. So we, we mess with him every once in a while. That is one big difference between Google Home and Alexa. But anyways, so smart hubs. So the smart hub talks to the smart device in the house and like Wink, Vera, they'll talk to Z-Wave, Zigbee, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, they'll talk to everything. And that's the way they've designed these things. So the next step up from this is what I was talking about is the security guys. So the Floyd's right here in Bloomington. Um, they sell a lot of the same stuff I do. And so you can do all this own automation can be done with your security panel. And it's kind of the next step up. So that is professionally installed, but actually designed to be used by you. 
So then all the Z-Wave devices, you can go out and buy an ad and control by yourself. You don't have to call me. You can add them to your security system, to your security panel by yourself. I deal with the security side. You deal, you work with all the Z-Wave stuff. So I've got several customers that that's the way we installed it. And then they just call me for questions every once in a while. Because I've got one guy that's got an entire smart home on one of the security panels. Every light, every thermostat, you name it, it's on that panel. And he just adds the programming in for the Z-Wave devices. So that's pretty cool. And then, then the final step is on, in the home automation world is the professionally installed. And then you can kind of do whatever you want to do. Um, when we do professional systems, again, it, it, the funny thing is, is we can talk, obviously, to everything. But so can most of these DIY hubs, too. So there, there is a little difference because the, 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 the hubs, even though they say they're good to like 250 devices, yeah, no. They're good for about 50 devices, which covers most average homes. But once you start crossing, especially on Z-Wave, you cross that 50 device list, you start having crosstalk issues, and then things don't work right. So, so that's kind of the example of smart home tech. I think, oh, and well, I guess I don't have the door price here, but this, I gave it away at another place. So this is an example of a Bluetooth device. So this is made by SwitchMate. And it's made so that you can literally, and it's over at Home Depot, or you can get it off of Amazon, but they're like 25 bucks. And you can get a rocker style or just a standard switch style. It literally just sticks on top of the light switch. And it's Bluetooth, so it's designed to work with your smartphone. That was kind of a weird thing, but that's the way they did it. But you can automate a light switch for 25 bucks. Don't have to pull it out. You just literally. Click this sucker right over the top, and it uses little magnets to grab onto the screws. And the, it comes with a set of batteries, and it's good for, they say, six months to a year, depending on how much you use it. But like I said, if you can get like a Wink Hub close enough to it, it'll talk to it. So within about 30 feet, clear shot. So that's, that's what's up, that's up further. I was wondering where I put that slide, because it's, like, it's actually a pretty cool device because of the fact it's so inexpensive. So. And I think that's it for what I have on the slides. Yep. So more questions. What did I miss? Do you think with TVs and all, like a lot of places going away from the digital and just doing the, the local channels, and then how you, you can get those to come in? The, the cord cutting is getting very popular these days. Um, I'm actually installing more antennas than I ever have uh, because with digital television these days, there's just under 40 channels here in the Twin Cities that if you can get them all, and so people will cut the cord, just use, and a lot of these, a lot of older homes around here, there's actually a Yagi antenna up in the attic. And it's, it's the old fashioned antenna that's, you know, giant. The digital only uses the alligator part in the front. That's all it uses. And so if somebody's got an old antenna up in the attic, we just hook right up to them. And they work great. <laughs> you know, we, we're in a good shot in this area from Shoreview. I can't, some of Bloomington's got some issues because Highland gets in the way. And there's a, there's a couple low spots. But otherwise, it's generally not too bad. But yeah, there's a lot of antennas up in the attic that you can literally just plug right into them, and away you go. Um, sure. uh, that's, stand up. That's um, about the kind of, let's say if they don't have one in the attic, you can put one in there. Yeah, we put them, putting them up. They, uh, a couple, you don't have to put up the big ones. I put up a little black one that's about this big and flat, and it's a $49 antenna. So I'm still this one for one TV, right? Uh, wow. uh, no, you can, I mean, depending, it's like, depending on, we never know how the older homes were wired, but usually most homes had some type of coax distribution in it for antenna. We can still hook that antenna up and hook it to multiple TVs inside the house. We took it down. Yeah, it happened a lot because cable, well, cable would have been in the 70s. Cable really got big in the 70s, and everybody started ditching their antennas because cable was cheap. And then cable got expensive, and that's why we have all what we call the cord cutters. Yeah, I got 
Yep, you can actually get some good service with rabbit ears. Yeah, I got uh, a couple TV stations. I don't know where they're coming from, but hey, I got some of those great TV stations. <laughs> Digital is just another, it's a format issue. All, it's all the difference is, is it comes over the same airwaves. It's UHF. The, we used to have VHF was like four, or two, four, five, nine, 11, 13, that's VHF. And then UHF was 29, 45, those channels. Well, all digital is, is we're up on the UH, UHF spectrum and that's why those old antennas still work. So it's just a delivery system, that's all it is. And then the decoder inside the TV is a little different. Yep, but yeah, you can do it with rabbit ears. Yeah, I got rabbit ears, but I don't get all the, I don't get 40. You might not get all of them, yeah. Some, they're uh, four. I'll get one out of uh, from the north. Yeah, because it's, a, yeah, the one out of, up by St. Cloud's tough, 45. 41. 41, yeah. There, there's a couple of them that are a little tough. Most of them are over here. But yeah, we, we, we don't live in Washington County because they're really in the dark over there. When I, this is a couple years ago, I don't know if they've grown. You can get to po your topography can get very challenging sometimes to get signals. Uh, sure. All those smart those you showed up, those like a monthly so Nope. You go out, um, I, I want to say the Wing Cub 2 is like 99 bucks. The Viera has three different, uh, they start at they have three different levels, and what, do you remember what the Samson was? 1.999. Yeah, they're all basically somewhere between 99 and 249 dollars. So even though you're speaking, to, you're communicating to the cloud, uh, is that cloud kind of private to those companies? Or? Well, yeah. So the Wink, the Wink one, for example, it's going to Wink servers wherever they're located, probably out in California. Samsung, same thing. It's going to Samsung servers. Uh, Viera would go to Viera servers. So, so in spite of that, you don't have a monthly cost? Right. Yep. There's no monthly cost. And even like the, the automation systems I put in, there's no monthly cost. The only difference is, is like the systems that we put in, most, almost all of the processing is actually in the house. So I put in a black box that's anywhere from this big to about yay big. And all the processing power is in that box in the house. So it doesn't, the only thing it has to go out to the internet for is to talk to my phone. And that's where we get into port forwarding and I gotta, we gotta do some stuff in the routers, but all the smarts are in the home and that's why it's more expensive. Because you're paying for all the smarts to be in your home. The DIY ways, it's cheaper because a bunch of the processors out in the cloud. So it's cheaper for the, for the manufacturers then to give you limited processing in those hubs. And that's why it's less expensive. And then the apps are free. You were talking about a security panel. Is, what is, that means that I have to call a security company, put in a security, or can I use one of those hubs? Oh, yeah. So back in, OK, so that's a good question. Let me go back. I don't need one in a security. If I can have all that, why can't? I was like. OK, so. And I, I, so there's the security guys like me. I come in and install a security panel. It's professionally monitored. It goes to a monitoring system here. And then the Z-Wave is, is, it has a Z-Wave card in it and it talks to all kinds of Z-Wave devices that, you know, I might put in one or two and show somebody how to use it, but it's designed then that you can just keep adding on to it. But there's a monthly fee for that because there's professional monitoring. This stuff is designed to attach to like the Wink Hub the Vera Hub or the, the Smart Hub, and these are Z-Wave sensors. The sensors I put in aren't Z-Wave, they're different. It, it's part of the security platform, so they work differently. But these are designed so that you can go up and you know, put the magnet and the sensor up on your door so that when the door opens, it sends a signal to the Smart Hub that says, hey, the door just was open. So I can have either, have you come put in a security panel in? Right. So I can add on at least 50 items, no more than 50. No, well, with the Z-Wave stuff, my security stuff, I can do, wow. I can easily put 100 and some odd secure, wireless security devices on any, any of the Honeywell panels I put on. But I don't know if you'd ever need that. No. But it just, but the, that security stuff, operates on a completely different platform than this does. And this is all I've seen so far for the Z-Wave stuff, is I've seen this system a couple times, and it's pretty basic to the, to the industry, is what they call three doors and a motion sensor. 
that's what it is. So if I don't have a security system, I can run all my tech stuff out of one of those hubs you were showing. Right. So you would, this would go with like your Samsung Smart Hub or the Vera or the Wink, and it talks to that hub. And, but like I said, you just got to be careful about going over 50 devices. And you've got five, five right there. So basically, but, I'm still trying to understand. I don't need a security panel. I can use one of the hubs. Right. Because, OK, so this, the security panel that like, I would put in has, has a whole thing that just is designed to talk to the monitoring system here in town. So, so when something goes wrong, it calls out to a monitoring center, and those people call the police, or they call you. OK, the smart hub can kind of do that. It just works a different way. Well, maybe I don't want that in my house. If I just want to date all those cute little Right. But like I said, so you could get. Go off the, the hub. I don't need yep. security. So you can go off. You can go off any of those hubs. Yep, and those devices will talk to that hub, and then you can set it up to send you alerts. So you, that you don't have to have any monitoring. Okay. Does your hub connect to the local power? Yeah, it's that is cup connected to the local power or I would suggest hooking it up to UPS so you have battery backup. I mean if you if your power goes out and you, yeah, I mean your, your light switches are going to go dead but your regular light switches are going dead anyways. But if you've got something like the security those devices are battery powered. So those will still be active and so it's not a bad idea then to back up your hub and then back up your Wi-Fi. And then if the power goes out you most battery backups you can get will go for you know several hours easily. So you can you can battery backup stuff, but then once the batteries go dead, stuff just shuts off and it'll reboot when the power comes back up. How hard is it to add devices to the ring core of the error and the other? It's pretty straightforward. Is it just programming numbers in? It's literally you 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 would you would set up, you would get like like if you buy these from Home Depot, quite often they'll have packages. You can get a package deal where you can get like two light switches because there was one with like switch mate where you get two switch mate light switches would come in it with it or you might get a couple plug-in lamp dimmers or they might give you a couple light switches that if you know as long as you're you know, mechanically inclined you can swap out your light switches it's pretty straightforward if you've done it before um, and then you just you just go to wink or whoever it is you download it into your from your app store your Google Play store into your phone and then you just follow the setup. Like I said, the, the ring stuff, I set one up for my son and it, it took me like, well, it took longer to install the, the cameras than it did to actually set up the ring system. And it's pretty, re, it's fairly reliable. Is ring Wi-Fi or is it? Ring is Wi-Fi, yep. And it, it, like I said, it, it's, it's a cool system because um, it, they have battery powered, they have, sol they have a solar powered camera we put one on his garage so that, you know, it's, it's a battery powered camera. So it'd go for like two to six months before you'd have to change to charge the battery. And it'll send you a little email saying, hey, battery's getting low. But they make a, a solar panel for 45 bucks that adds on to it. So you just face it to the sun and then you don't have to deal with it. Just charges it up. So, sure. I was just curious why the other standards of the besides Wi-Fi, are they more reliable or something? Or? Um, Are they minimize cross -top? cost. It's the Z-Wave is what they call it creates what they call a mesh network, and it's just less expensive. If you started, if you tried to do some of these things Wi-Fi, they wouldn't work real well, and so that's why the like the, especially like light switches and door locks, quite often are Z-Wave. It's just it's less expensive, and then they they're designed to work with a smart hub, and that's why they do it. Because like it used to be. Oh, when we started doing this, a uh, controlled light load was $250. You can get one of those, well, the Bluetooth one's 25 bucks, and you can get usually like a Leviton or a GE light switch from Home Depot or Menards for like 40 bucks, 35, 40 bucks. So it's like I said, again, dramatic cost change. If you cut a infinity cord, well, sorry, I was looking at the wrong person when I pointed. Cut the cord 
for antenna chip, what are other alternatives? Right? Well, see, that's where you, you still have to have internet service. So to make any of this stuff work, you have to have internet service. You don't, necess well, you don't necessarily need a lot of internet service, but you have to have internet service for it to work. So what are the alternative concerns for that? Well, it's like in Bloomington, what we have, we have Century CenturyLink and Comcast, or that's it for Bloomington, isn't it? And then the only other way you can go is, is why you can go wireless. Um, wireless to what? Well, as in you can use your Verizon, you know, Verizon makes a smart hub that's designed to work in the house, but you, you just, that's not a good idea. If, you, if you've got a hardwired internet connection, that's the cheapest way to get your internet. So. The only other way to do it. If you've got the cord. Okay, so the only other way to do it, and, you, it, and it, it, it works if you don't use a lot of data, is there's a, there's, something, uh, there's a product out there called Freedom Pop. Freedom Pop has little Wi-Fi routers and stuff that you can get that work on, I believe, Sprint's network. And you can get about, I think it's like 750 megs for a month for free. So you buy the device, they're anywhere from, I think, 25 to like 150 bucks, and they come with like 750 megabytes of data for free. And then you can buy packages the more data you need. I use those for doing like remote security installs for like if I, I've got a contractor that's got a new home where we want to put a uh, security system in, I'll put one of those in with a camera and a security system and I won't run over that 750 megabytes. But like I said, I'm, that's a huge caution that you can burn through 750 megabytes of data in a heartbeat if you're not careful. But that is another way out there that if you need limited, limited internet data, that's kind of a cool way to do it. I've got a couple of those devices that, that I use. So it is out there. And then if you, if you add friends, like if you get one and your neighbor gets one, you get more data. Then you just become friends on the Freedom Pop network and then you can get more data. So it's, that is another way to do data. Don't the security company, when they put a panel in, isn't that, uh, no, no, no. that's not connected? They're connected by a cell network, generally. You could be cell or, or internet, either one. Uh, basically, landline's almost gone down. I never got your question. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you didn't show anything for, like, uh, is there anything to help with moisture sensor? Or oh, yeah. Um, so when we were talking about those water valves, those are moisture sensors. So the moisture sensor goes down on the floor and it, it's looking for moisture. It's basically just a contact. When the water hits the floor, it shuts the contact, which triggers the alarm. That's, that's about all it is, literally. And they make, I, at, there's hardwired ones, there's battery powered ones. The one that comes with that device is battery powered. And they can be temp, they can also be just low temp sensors. That's why I said there's standalone low temp sensors so you don't have to get the thermostat. If you have like a cabin someplace, you know, that's where you'd put like one of those Freedom Pop devices as long as it can get internet signal. You buy it for, you know, for the price you pay. You put it in the cabin. That gives you internet service to that cabin. And then you can put your little device down on the floor and you should be good to go. I know that you probably do this, but before Yes. <coughs> well, thank you. Uh, I assume you can call you for uh, like consoles, and, but we don't like to do this and this and this in the house. You would come out and help us, you know, make sure we do it the right way. You know, sure. Instead of us doing all that research, you say, well, this brand works good with doing this and this and this. Yeah, we, I do consulting because I like working with people like to do it themselves because that's the way I got in the business. I was a DIY guy. So I just want to make so, sure you do that. Yeah, yeah. We do consulting so you can you can knock yourself out, you know, and like I said, any of them are pretty reasonably easy to set up. And if you get into trouble, I've got business cards here. You can give me a call and they can come out and give you a little consult. But like I said, most of it's pretty, pretty straight. The, the locks are the toughest and it's really not because of the, of the, of talking to it. It's because it's an electronic device where it's got to throw that lock. So if you have to like push your door a little bit to get it to lock, yeah, they won't work. So I actually have my contractor that I work with who's really good at 
getting doors straight, I actually have to come have him come out and get that door lined up so that that device can just throw that lock across. And that's usually the biggest problem. The, the, the getting them on the network, getting the work is rather easy. It's just getting that lock to throw. Get what we really need, not just have. Yeah, you know, it, it comes down to when it comes to, like I said, the internet, there's more and more stuff going on. It just kind of depends on what you want to do. I mean, it's just, it's out there. Uh, the costs have come dr down dramatically over time. And it's just kind of like, yeah, what do you want to control? I like it because I can, I can babysit my house without being at home. That's, I kind of look at it as my butler. You know, I can dial into my butler and see what's going on, you know. I can look at my cameras. I can see if, if, if packages have come to the front door. I can get an alert if I forget to leave the garage door open, and I've done it before. And you get this little annoying text about 10 minutes later going, hey, you forgot to shut the garage door. And I just open up my app and close the garage door. Sitting at the airport, I've heard that story. It's like, did I, you know, what, did I get everything? And people open up their apps and go, oh, yeah, I forgot something. Or like John, who was supposed to be here tonight that's got a business in Bloomington, He's got the Wi-Fi lock on his back door, and he's walked out, forgot to lock the door, and he'll get an alert. I got a realtor that uses them, same thing. They, went, you know, they walk away from the house, and these are security systems. He goes, oh, did I arm the system? Checks his phone, goes, oh, I didn't. And then he goes, and, but he can't get the system to arm because he forgot to lock the front door. Well, it's good for him to know that he needs to turn around and lock that front door. So that's where the stuff really kind of comes into. And then turning, you know, controlling lights, especially exterior lights, that's usually what we aim for in security, is, is security lights. And I love using it for uh, trees. Uh, my Christmas trees, my Christmas lights, all that stuff's controlled by the Z-Wave system because it's easier to set up than the, than the goofy manual ones that I never can figure out. And so it's moving everything we used to do happens. Remember the class where you turn lights on and off? So you're basically taking all that and putting it using the Yeah, because when they came out with this, they came out with an inexpensive interface. And if you don't want to use a phone, you can, you can get an, uh, an iTouch, like an iTouch, like you were bringing up. You can get a tablet. You don't have to have an actual cell phone. You just have to have something that you can load an app onto. So that way you can control it right at. Now, there you're going to be limited to your Wi-Fi networks, but you can do it. Any place you can, anything you can load a phone an app onto, you can control it. What's the radius or range of a Z? Ah, okay, good question. So the Z-Wave creates what they call a mesh network, and the idea is that if I have a light switch over there, and a light switch over here, and something else over there, that talks to that, and that talks to that, which talks to this one, and about 35 feet, give or take, in any, any average home, you get about 35 feet, including going through walls, unless you have a Faraday cage home, like my customer Nidina, that's old-fashioned lath and plaster, and they have that metal lath in the wall. Yeah, that sucks. But that's why that the Z-Wave, as long as it can talk to one other device, it can take the signal and relay it around. And that's why I said 50 devices is kind of the maximum, because they all talk to one another. And generally, and that's what we'll do is those, those like little plug-in things. Um, uh, those, those, that Leviton piece, that's just a little plug-in module. You can get them for like you know, 25, 30 bucks. We use, them, we use them for boosters. If we get too far from something, you just plug one of these suckers in a wall outlet halfway in between and you're good to go. So, and then Zigbee's, Zigbee's a little farther because of the arc, the way it desi it's designed, but you're not gonna, usually in, in the DIY market, you're basically gonna see Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Z-Wave. That's the stuff you're gonna see. Zigbee usually gets a little more professional, or if somebody, and that's where you have, and that was the other reason. I was, so you have to watch as more companies come out with their own, you know, all of a sudden, I don't know, I'll just make up a name, all of a sudden you've got Samantha's Hub, some of them make it pri proprietary to their only hub, so then you have to buy their devices. Personally, you want, to me, you want to avoid that because then you're limited to their device and maybe their stuff's more expensive. The Z-Wave, the Wi-Fi, that stuff's very generic. 
It's a cost, a big platform which keeps the cost down. Um, I think it's called like Raku or something like that for getting uh, where you can get cable and everything. Oh, Roku. Roku, okay. Yeah, Roku. Uh, so if we're talking about like stuff like that, Roku is a delivery. Uh, it's just a delivery device to your TV. So you have Apple TV. Apple TV and Roku are probably the most popular. And you can load apps onto those devices to get your Sling TV, your Netflix, your Hulu, any type of streaming service. And or Am if you have Amazon, you, if you have an Amazon account, Amazon Prime, you get Amazon TV. And so those are usually on the Fire Stick. And, and, uh, and uh, Google and Apple are a little cranky about Amazon, so some of the devices you can't load the Amazon app onto, but Roku you can load just anything onto. So Roku you can load anything onto. The Apple TV, some of, some of the Apple TVs won't take the Amazon Fire app. And I think Google got a little, some of the Google stuff you can't, like Chromecast, I carry a Chromecast with me and I don't think I can put the Amazon that, app on. That is, is that a monthly? Yeah, Netflix, Hulu, any of those are monthly services. Um, Netflix is what, 10 bucks a month. I think Hulu is about the same. Uh, Sling TV is kind of cool if you're card cutters. You can, if any Twins fans besides me, um, you, you got to be able to get Fox Sports North. And there's only a couple ways to get Fox Sports North. There's basically cable or you know pay TV. Sling TV, you can get Fox Sports North for in their $30 package. So that was kind of a big deal when they came out with that. So Sling's pretty nice. What about security and all of these things? It's all connected to the internet. Security is a big issue. Right, and so that's where you get into, like I was, like, you know, so the least secure stuff is gonna be something like a Chamberlain garage door, you know, there's Chamberlain IQ or whatever it is. Because Chamberlain's just developing that to sell garage doors. I mean, that, that's kind of, and that's what we're seeing. But the hubs t tend to be more secure because, you know, that's their business is selling the hubs. And then, so it's kind of like your individual devices. And if you see a Wi-Fi camera for 20 bucks at Target, yet yeah, don't get it. Because the security on those things is usually horrendous. If you see the news articles on, you know, your nightly news where they've hacked cameras, that's what they're hacking. They're hacking those cheap suckers. Um, you, you get what you pay for. And if it's cheap, it just means their security's cheap. So don't buy at Target. Well, no, I'm not saying don't buy at Target, because you can get Nest at Target. It's just, yeah, you can get Nest. I'm pretty sure you can get Nest at Target. I think I've seen it there. But you can buy that at, for sure at Best Buy. You can get it at Best Buy. It's just, the more you're paying for the device, usually the, more, the better the security is in the device. So, and that's why it's like, with all my security stuff, it's bank level encryption. So that's pretty serious security. So I know when I install a Honeywell panel, I know what encryption they're using. It's serious stuff. Uh, it, it, I, for somebody to hack a Honeywell panel, I just can't see it happening. And it, it's pretty serious security. But when you do these standalone things, that's where you get into kind of you know, less security. Is the security through encryption or what? It's through the type of encryption that they're, the, this, whoever's doing the piece is using or however they're doing their, because you don't have to necessarily actually have to have encryption. So that's why I said these Wi-Fi cameras that are really cheap, those are the ones that's like, yeah, just, yeah, it's not worth it. So when you get them to the cloud, how do you keep security? Well, when they're going out to the cloud, then you're relying on the, on the device, like Winx, however they're doing it, you're relying on their security. And usually the, the, usually the hub security is actually reasonably good. It's not to the level of the security industry stuff because that's what the security industry is, is security. So Honeywell, GE, Variant, all those guys, they, they don't want their stuff getting hacked because that's their name and it's security. So their stuff is really locked down. The hubs, it's still not bad, but it just depends on how, how concerned with security you are. And that's why, like I said, on the professional side, all of our smarts are in the box. It's not going out to the cloud. It's all residing in the box in your house. And so it's all local. It's all local. It's not out in the cloud. Can you set your own house on fire or can somebody else? Is it a smart house? 
Well, that'd be awfully hard. I mean, I suppose if you had a, if you had an oven control, you might be able to do it. But I haven't, I haven't heard of anybody doing it yet, yet. Hey, John. Yep. Can you answer questions after? Sure. I want to do a door prize drawing, so I yeah, want to wrap it up for now. Uh, first of all, thanks to John for uh, <laughs> great seminar.